uh, if you look at your uh, outline which we had given in the beginning, of course, uh, we had given a tentative uh, outline. It is not that always uh, that outline can be adhered to with uh, classes or time frame. Uh, the one of the reasons for that is uh, this is very very difficult and that uh, which one will be will be more useful for you or which one will be less useful to you and to identify them right not only that in many cases this may be a prerequisite for your next class or some other classes maybe either 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 your some descriptive like this one or some engineering classes, this may act as a prerequisite. This idea, this knowledge may help you. That is why, as and when uh, we will be coming across we, uh, from uh, my uh, experience, that this part may be more useful to the students than maybe in the second week, which we had given laws, they are absolutely what we, we can term it to be dry, because laws, uh, yeah, there are many, but uh, it is less to be highlighted or highlighted in the, I, I, I do not say that they are uh, having less uh, um, uh, importance, it is equally important, but uh, in the sense they are more dry in the sense, not so much to understand but more to remember, memorize. So, that will go very, very quickly rather than uh, explaining like this uh, what we are doing even in the first week uh, what we were supposed to, which we have not. So, today we are coming to another uh, important one. So, let us see which one is that. This is uh, our dairy and food process and products technology. So, it remains same. So, let us uh, go into to this uh, some, some topic that is of additives, right. It, this was on the first week. Yes, this is important, which will tell as additive, which will tell as preservative, etcetera, etcetera. So, additives we can define that uh, substance those are added to products to perform specific technological functions such as say it may act as a preservative or it may act as a inhibitor to the growth of organisms or pathogens or it may act as coloring material or it may add a flavor to the material. So, depending on what you are using where, so you can then additive is a big umbrella, right. So, depending on what you want accordingly, this may be termed as a preservative if you want to, if you want to, uh, if you have seen mummy is doing something at home at and sometimes uh, is adding something for keeping it for a longer time. So, then it can be termed as a preservative, right. In, in some t cases, uh, you also have seen that some things are added for uh, betterment of the appearance in terms of color or maybe some odor which is liked by you or flavor that is being added. So, depending on what is your requirement, what is your goal? what do you want to do accordingly the the thing the substance which is added can be termed as additive right so additive we can define as a substance that is added to either extend the life or to improve the color or to impose some flavor or odor to impart some flavor or odor to the specific food or maybe to inactivate uh, some 
enzymatic reactions. So, those are or 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 two may be keep away the pathogenic organisms from the food material. So, those substances may be called as the additive right. Now, justification is why should we do that this maintains the nutritional quality of the food material and this enhances the stability reducing wastage makes food attractive to consumer in a manner that that precludes deception provides essential aids to food processing right so types of additives then how many types there that can be natural can be artificial or can be man made right so natural which is available in the in nature in many many in many many cases many food materials do have base additives by its nature or you can extract you can you can utilize them as a natural resource right in some cases maybe you have made it by you and then added and in some cases it might have been synthetically uh, synthetically uh, obtained and uh, you might be adding them. So, depending on that what is the uh, source, what is the source, so we can um, divide them into three types. So, one is natural which uh, are found naturally, one is natural which are found naturally and uh, such as extracts of uh, beetroot that can be used as a coloring agent. This is an example or man made additives. So, this man made additives are chemicals or it can be chemicals or synthetic directly it can be or it can be synthesized substances may be uh, uh, found naturally such as benzoic acid. So, it has the name E2 101 right or used as preservatives that is or artificial that is synthetically produced or naturally are not available this is not naturally available they are synthetically produced. So, they can be called as uh, artificial right. Now, food additives as a whole we can say that food additives are any substitute or any substance that becomes part of a food product either directly or indirectly during processing, storing or packaging. So, this in one umbrella we can say that food additives are substance or substitutes that becomes part of a food product either directly or indirectly during the processing or storage or packaging right. Now, some terms which we come across called grass that is generally recognized as safe. This comes under the purview of this add additive. So, there are some substances which are generally recognized as safe and that can be safely utilized or added. This was first established in 700 uh, places on the list of without going through testing right. So, if those list is your, your item it falls under those list generally recognized as safe then you can directly add it without testing right. Now, those substances are being reevaluated, of course, because uh, this is what is science what was not known yesterday is known today or may be knowing tomorrow. So, depending on uh, the availability of the information. So, this list may go on changing 
uh, adding or deleting. The reason being some which were found long back was very good, but nowadays it might have been seen that it has some other effect which are not desirable. So, non desirable effect. So, for that that typical things might be typical chemicals might be either unlisted or enlisted. So, depending on the use and if it is again coming under in the list of the generally recognized as safe uh, list, then you can uh, as uh, when we come to the law uh, sometime. So, that time you will see that you can directly use without going for any bindings like that. Okay. So, after generally recognized as safe, let us look into uh, what is required to become a food additive, what are the requirements. So, we see that these six things which we can say safely that the minimum requirement to for any substance to become additive to the food is it should provide additive is uh, effective that uh, that sorry you know that what you are adding must be effective otherwise what is the purpose why should you add it right. So, it must be effective so that is one uh, requirement for to become additive uh, it should prove to be addi addi uh, additive uh, that can be detected and measured in final products. So, we should be able to detect whatever we have added in even in the final product such that it is not making some chemical or uh, some binding reactions. So, that it is it cannot be identified. So, that should not be. So, it is a, a another requisite that it should be having some way or other it is should be measurable in the product also. Then to the study the effects of the substance on animals in large doses whenever any any additives are being added right. Uh, okay, I, I tell it of the of the cup, but uh, please do not take it in that because not yet established some of our students are working on it that uh, some uh, plant origin materials are being also added to say product like rasgulla to increase the life as well as shelf life as well as the for the nowadays diabetes has become uh, uh, very much uh, uh, I mean uh, in, in, in a bad shape so, and uh, it is it is it is uh, going up the people who are suffering from that. So, to cater those kind of people some chemical some some uh, plant origin materials uh, student our students are rather my students are working and there it may be I, these things are applicable these things can be said that if it is not effective if it cannot be identified even in the product at the product stage or uh, things like that we cannot call that to be additive as well those should be also seen with the help of some uh, animal tests. Right. So, we are uh, so doing with the uh, animal test like your um, test with uh, mice and uh, rats and others such that what is the effect on that then only it will be looked into uh, the mankind how whether it is having really any harmful or any better effect or not. S uh, then submit results to validate the findings and schedule a public hearing and either federal department of uh, 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 alterations or the different I should say different agencies depending on the depending on the nation different agencies may approve or reject to become a food additive. Then 
functions of the food additives what it does. Food additives it acts as preservatives number one. Now, to keep the food material fresh and reduce the spoilage this can be added and uh, this can control the bacteria and mold, fungi and yeast any such things that can be controlled or arrested activity of those uh, microorganisms that can be done. And in this case we add many such uh, preservatives as additive the, so, the first function of the additive is as to act as a preservative. Example, benzoid in many cases benzoids are added right or BHT that is butylated hydroxy anisole right or BHA or BHT that butylated hydroxy uh, toluene or anisole. So, in that case this is called as the antioxidant or calcium calcium uh, propionate that inhibits molds. So, this can be additives or, or preservatives and then sodium bisulphate or metabisulphite in many cases they are also used as the preservative right. Maybe in jam jelly marmalade when you make at home uh, mummy might be adding this type of preservatives either sodium benzoate or maybe uh, metabolic sulphide they are whatever is available it is added. Sodium nitrate in some previous class we had also told that yes it acts as a preservative right. Then other things then processing aids processing aid it may help in the processing to improve the consistency to to add stability or to add oil and water mixtures and retain moisture any of these it can be right so the purpose is to improve the consistency of the of the uh, not only product consistency of the processing unit. So, that your your desirable things are achieved right it adds the stability and aid oil and water mixtures and also it can retain the moisture of the product right. For any such we can call to it to be the processing aid right the additive which are being used. For example, in many cases gums are used that can be alginate or the caraginin or xanthin. So, this is algin or maybe that uh, product is algin, but, uh, but uh, the chemical could be alginate right. In some cases it could be aluminum, calcium, silicate they also help to improve the stability uh, right or consistency. In some benzyl peroxide they are also added. So, these are added either to increase the stability or consistency or a good behavior of oil in uh, and water mixture. And oil water mixtures we, we will come across very well when we see when we see when we see that uh, milk when we will be dealing with directly that time you will see that uh, this oil water mixture is primarily affected because oil and water they are not miscible right that we know very well that the water and oil they are not miscible. So, if they are not miscible then uh, how to bring them close how to keep them together. So, for that an intermediate or, or, or a friend of both 
right a friend of both either of water and and the oil is added or is may be naturally there so that acts as the additive right so that may be added okay so the third function is that to act as a nutrient right to act as a nutrient which maintain or improve the nutritional quality of the food for example alpha tocopherol ascorbic acid biotin beta carotene calcium pantothenate or folic acids these are added as nutrients in many many products right these are some examples it does not mean beyond this is is not list is not there right these are some examples of different types like alpha tocopherol tocopherol we know this is an antioxidant right ascorbic acid uh, that is also in many cases added in such that in the during the process if the ascorbic acid content is minimized then that process may be uh, in cases uh, termed that not so suitable because uh, ascorbic acid is also one very heat sensitive uh, product so your processing might not have been tolerating such uh, such uh, conditions which you are prevailing right so next is oh, this is of course because of mine so next is folic acid or calcium pantothenate so beta carotene biotin they are all added as a addition so that the nutritive value can be increased right so the fourth function of the additive can be that uh, it can be acted as flavor aiding or flavor improving material right so as a flavor improving material in that the uh, the, the, the complement is that it may add to the flavor right and if i i, I remember uh, normally we are happy with any and every kind of ice cream right uh, during uh, my stay at an ice cream industry i saw that they had they had uh, added some flavor like pan pan i hope little if you know so right uh, after the end of the any 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 party or any such a uh, uh, huge uh, um, feast uh, people do uh, take uh, pan uh, as the end product at, as the end of the end of the food so so uh, there this flavor pan was added to the ice cream such that the both ice cream and ice cream you are getting the uh, uh, pleasure of taking it as well the you are taking getting the pleasure of taking pan because that flavor was added in it right these are some typical examples okay so to complement magnify or modify the taste or aroma of the food this may be flavor aiding or flavor enhancing agent right for example aspartame corn syrup ethyl vin uh, vanillin mannitol monosodium glutamate of course msg monosodium glutamate uh, this was also uh, taken as a flavoring material but uh, nowadays as i said in some earlier class that or uh, okay today i said that uh, sometime that in the list uh, things are uh, getting added or getting deleted depending on time and again it is it is being it is being uh, by by the respective this organization it is uh, its functions are being uh, evaluated and if they are found that not so suitable then or some bad effects are there then they are withdrawn or if it is found to be very good then they are being added so one such example is that monosodium glutamate or msg known normally 
So, it is normally nowadays people are trying to avoid because of it is not uh, so good cause, so good uh, effect on, I am not saying effect on the food it is ok, but post effect on the human being may not be that much good. So, it is not being utilized uh, nowadays uh, monosodium glutamate, but they are all flavor enhancer or flavor enhancing material. So, this we have to keep in mind right. Then colors in many cases as we said colors are added for example, to give uh, foods are desired appetizing uh, or characteristic color they are added right. Maybe uh, not so good in taste, but its color is so appealing that the product is being sold right. Uh, because they are so appealing. So, that is why color is or appearance, color is in, in other words uh, primarily associated with the appearance. So, if color is attractive, then the product first is chosen and then they find whether it is good or bad. So, for from the consumer point of view, consumer level, this color has to be attractive or color is a uh, uh, having a primary effect on the selection. Some colors are added like caramel, beta uh, apo 8 uh, carotenol which is orange in color, caramel color we just said many times, citrus red, FD and C blue number 1, FD and C red number 3, FD and C yellow number 5, these are some coloring materials right. Some common uh, some common preservatives though which are active uh, that can be seen that chemicals right how they are act, uh, affecting some chemicals for example, chemicals sulphides right in a, a it is applicable in insects and microorganisms, action is as antioxidant and used in dried fruits and wines. For like that many such uh, chemicals which are getting affected we are listing here, sodium nitrate, uh, propionic acid, sorbic acid, benzoic acid etcetera, uh, then clostridia mold mold, yeast and mold uh, organisms where it is being uh, active. Uh, the function is that I antimicrobial, antimicrobial mm -hmm. here it was antioxidant right. In car, uh, in, in, in cured meats or bread and cakes, cheese, cheese cakes, salads etcetera, salad dressing, soft drinks or salad dressings, ketchup all this they may be applicable they may are being used right. So, this is in in one uh, now product quality I think uh, this is an another one which we need a longer time. So, today it uh, being very small uh, almost we are on the verge of the end of the class. So, I think we should talk about uh, the next class, but I repeat that uh, we had given you the uh, framework or the syllabus, it is not likely all the time we will adhere week by week the same topic depending on I, the our, our experience or my experience with the students how much they like and which is more important or less important depending on that we will highlight somewhere more somewhere less ok. Thank you.